In this presentation, we will take a look at the company preferences within QuickBooks Pro 2019, focusing in on the accounting preferences. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home tab. This will always be our default position. We have the open windows open, that being done by going to the view tab and open windows up at the top. We've set up the company and now need to take a look at the preferences. There are a lot of preferences, but fortunately, most of the default settings are good. So we wanna go through the preferences. We wanna take a look at uh, some type of areas where people might have different preferences and some areas where we need to set up for the file that we will be going through here. So we will be making some changes in order to move forward. Although, again, most of the default settings are gonna be pretty good and good to go within uh, the system. So to set up the preferences, we're gonna to go to the Edit tab up top. So we're going to the drop down up top in the Edit tab. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom where it says Preferences. So this will be the Preferences. Select that item. Now it may default to like the general tab or somewhere down here. We wanna be up in the accounting tab. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna go down to the major preferences and see what we have. As we go through these, note that there's typically gonna be two tabs. There may be more than two tabs. There may be only one tab, but just remember that when you look over here, uh, there, there could be more than one tab. So the my preferences, we don't have anything that we need to change there clearly. We're gonna to go to the company preferences tab and see what we have here. Now in the company preferences, we could say use account numbers. If you're in a company and you're familiar with using account numbers, this is a great thing to turn on because it gives you a lot more control over the, the ordering of the accounts. Although it doesn't give you complete control because remember the accounts will be in order first by type. If you're not familiar with account numbers, then it's best just to leave this alone because it's quite possible that you'll set up account numbers that aren't very coherent. They don't really make sense because they'll be out of order given the, the fact that the accounts will first be ordered by um, the account type. So we're going to leave the default setting as no accounts number there. Again, if, if you are good with account numbers uh, and, and know how they should be set up, then it's a good thing to have. If not, we'll leave it, leave it there. Uh, required accounts, we're going to keep that as checked. Then we have the class tracking here. So use class tracking for transactions. Uh, this can be useful for different types of areas if we want to kind of break out our data by class. So such as a region or uh, different components within the company, the class settings will allow us to kind of break out sections uh, and, and group things a bit differently. But it's a bit more complicated to do that. And so we would only want to do that if we had certain needs in order to set up different classes. So for now, we're not going to have any classes. Automatically assign uh, general journal entry numbers. This means that we're gonna pre-number the journal entries. So when we make a journal entry, like a debit and credit type of thing, it's gonna have a pre-number in terms of what the journal entry will be. We'll keep the default there. Uh, Warren, when posting a transaction to retained earnings, this is important because uh, posting to retained earnings can kind of throw things off from period to period. So it's usually gonna tell us, hey, you probably don't wanna to post to retained earnings because normally you don't do that. So we'll keep that default. And then these two are usually really good warnings I would keep as the default, but for a practice problem as this is, I'm going to uncheck them here. So warn if a transaction is 90 days past um, in the past or in the future. And what that'll do is if you hopefully we're working in the current time, but if you're not working in the current time, then all your transactions are going to be somewhere outside this range. Because for example, if you're entering an entire year's worth of data, at the end of the year in order to, to enter that information to do the taxes or something like that, then all the transactions you make are going to be over this time period old and you're going to get an, an error message or a warning every time just saying, hey, this thing is over this time period old. Are you sure you want to do this? Uh, maybe you miss put in the date. And so, um, so it, it can be useful if we're all working in the current time because it is very possible that we put in a wrong date and that can throw everything off. So these are useful if we're working in the current time, if we're entering data, of course, in a practice problem such as this, or entering a lot of data, say, through an entire year's worth of information, then these can be very distracting because they will give us a warning with just about every transaction.
So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those items. And that's what we will have for the accounting preferences. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.